Today on Toy Shiz Swamp Thing, you are amazing. Let's talk toys. Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look. And today we are totally checking out the brand new McFarlane Toys' DC Multiverse, their new mega figure, Swamp Thing. A figure that uh, I've been really looking forward to. Big fan of Swamp Thing. I like the old toys, not so much the cartoon. We can talk about that later if that comes up, but yeah. It's a very detailed Swamp Thing, and the box is absolutely enormous. So enormous that you would think that, yeah, I mean, it's a good fit for a giant mega figure, but a lot of space in there. It could have fit a few more parts in. I'm just going to say that on the back side, you get a really nice look at the figure. And, of course, here's the barcode as well. Now, they haven't started to hit store shelves just yet. Mine got shipped in from Amazon, so if you ordered off Amazon, look for yours, hopefully coming soon. And there will be a GameStop exclusive version of Swamp Thing. Same exact figure, comes with the same exact accessory, except he's got the horns. Unfortunately, no wings, though. That was kind of a, a later look for Swamp Thing. One that, because he doesn't have the wings, yeah, I kind of like this uh, normal version better. But in either case, I'm very excited to check this out. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice, hot, swampy cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Mega Figure, Alec Holland. The Swamp Thing. And here's everything taken out of the packaging. Rather large box, like I said. One accessory, but a very, very, very detailed figure. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of differences of the foliage and all the swamp material he makes up. But he comes with this really cool looking accessory. It's cool. It's like a clay face kind of thing, right? Like a piercing uh, weapon that he can manifest his hand into. It looks like a lot of other things. <laughs> I'm just saying it's incredibly detailed, sculpted to the nines, I gotta say, and it's articulated as well, but I'll go ahead and pop that on in just a second, because let's just take this figure in. That is pretty darn cool looking. Really nice shade of green to him, lots of browns, lots of little intricate details that make up various plant life that you'd find in a swamp or otherwise, wherever he may be in the world. But lots of textures going on. I love the spines right here for his spinal cord all protruding. On his shoulder, he does have some roses, which are very cool. I would have loved to have seen those just be a little bit different color just to kind of pop that out just a little bit more. But overall, I'm very happy with the greens and the browns and the shades and Right here on this arm, you get some dangly bits, just some excessive pieces of swamp hanging off. His hands are beautifully rendered. And on this hand, just in particular, very sharp fingernails, but I like the outstretchedness that he has going on to the chest with all the various vines going up onto his neck and his face is every bit swamp thing that you love. It's got the big red eyes, the black, the nose, the mouth, very well done, very well executed, and I love the head. It, it has elements of a skull to it, mixed with all that swampy goodness. It's very cool looking. I'm very impressed, let's just say that. I think that this is a wonderful looking figure, and being a huge Swamp Thing fan, yeah, I definitely dig this. As far as the articulation goes, for the most part, you do get some... Fairly decent articulation out of the head. He will go up a certain degree, so you can get that kind of brooding when you look down, looking off to the side, so you can get multiple poses like that. The head, I will just say this, arms, legs, go easy on them. He's a little bit stuck in some instances. In the arms, especially that I noticed, he's got these parts right here that really do well to cover up the joints and the shoulders. You can move them around. It just looks really cool, and it moves well, especially with the butterfly joints, and you can put his arms all the way up. He has single-jointed elbows, a spin at the elbow. On this particular side, though, I had an instance where the ball joint was really stuck, so I did heat it up. Once I started moving it around, it did start working quite well. So it's one of those things you just kind of have to get it going to make it work for you. So don't stress anything. Just go easy on it. But again, the elbows, the wrists are very cool, very thick. They don't have those ball joints that a lot of modern, smaller McFarlane toys have. But I really like how they work in this instance. He's got some really nice ab, not so much crunch, but twist. He will go back a little bit 
forward, no, he won't be going anywhere forward, but uh, nice rotation in that sense. You can get a lot of dynamic poses out of him. He has like this, I always say, like for the Nightwing figures, I would say like a diaper. This works. This doesn't look very diaperish to me, and it works with the legs. It blends in with everything going on, so they did a great job. He's got double-jointed knees to him, very tree trunk-like legs, very thick legs, which should help him stand, but unfortunately his feet, the ball joints in the feet are a little bit loose, and then the toes are a little bit loose as well. So standing him, you're going to need a stand. You might need two stands. That's one big gripe that I have. He's huge with the hands and swapping him out. This is the one that wants to come off. The other one doesn't, but once you get that really cool tentacle kind of spear tip going to replace his hand... It, it, it works well with this figure. It's very cool looking. I would have personally loved a lot more attachments. I think that that would have been cool. Vines going out every which way. Vines for his back. An alternate head. Maybe not so much a grimacing one. Maybe more of a, a somber, sort of smiling one. Just to say. You know what I mean? There is a lot of room in that box. Just going to point that out again. <laughs> now here's the kicker though. When I said mega figure... I ain't lying. This guy is huge. <laughs> he is a enormous figure, which I think a lot of people, they might be thrown off in the sheer size of Swamp Thing, but Swamp Thing has different sizes to him. He's always changing his shape and form. I think it fits, especially if they're saying it's like a DC Rebirth version. You could put him with your Death Metal, although he didn't look like this in Death Metal, but Maybe go Justice League Dark a little bit. They're kind of on their way in that sense. I know, Dr. Fate, but he's just a stand-in for right now. Well, it works either way. But you know what I mean? He's a humongous tall figure. He is the tallest DC Multiverse McFarlane figure to date. But what I really like is to see this newest Swamp Thing figure with the Swamp Thing figures that I had as a kid. I absolutely love the old Kenner collection. I have them all. But just to see where they were... And all the gimmicks and everything, and now to have this really articulated, huge Swamp Thing is very cool. Even down to that, what was it, Justice League action or something like that. That interesting show. I just bought the Swamp Thing figure, really wasn't interested. But a very cool playset to put with the new Swamp Thing. Nice for your shelves, your diorama, if you're a huge Swamp Thing fan. Again, just for having old toys to new toys. It's very cool to see. And I think... You're really going to like this Swamp Thing. The standing aside, if you get a stand for him, it'll work. You just kind of have to pose him right. But that would be my big gripe. He's a little bit loose, at least on mine. You might luck out. Maybe it's not a thing. But once you get him posed and you figure it out, he will stand. But he tend to topple over a lot more than I liked. I like the hand attachment. Would have loved to have had more, right? Vines. Big old, I don't know, something very Swamp Thing-ish. And I think that an extra head portrait really would have cemented this figure. Just giving it icing on the cake because nothing says better. Like, you can have an angry Swamp Thing, but I think a more solemn, somber, sort of pondering Swamp Thing would have been cool as well. I absolutely love the detail on this figure. I think the paint is great on him. It's a home run if you're a huge Swamp Thing fan. Or if you've never had a Swamp Thing, I think this will definitely be for you. But I am curious to know what you guys think about this figure. Will you be grabbing? Have you already? Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Swamp Thing. What's your favorite version of Swamp Thing? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, if only <laughs> that show had continued. Remember that whole thing? It got canceled like after the first two episodes and then... They kind of released them all. Then it didn't go anywhere. That was, a, that was a bummer, right? Bring more Swamp Thing back. That's what we want to see. When we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.